Welcome back, I'm The Watch Nerd. In this video, we're gonna go over quite possibly the best value prop in vintage or all, all over watches right now in the market. I'm wearing a quick wristwatch check because it's important for our video. Um, this is a Rolex Oyster Perpetual. Uh, this watch is retailed around 5,900. This is quote unquote supposed to be the value prop in the collection. Try to go find one uh, at retail because if you do, in my opinion, even though it goes over retail, this is a value piece. Uh, $6,000 sounds like a lot for a watch collector, but if you find out what's inside, then it's a different story. Now, on the other flip side, I have a watch that is made my, well, we'll talk about information later, and if you do have any, I would love to know. Uh, but this watch, in my opinion, is made between 1913 uh, and 1918. Could be even predating that, but I would love uh, to see if we're going to flip into it here. Um, before, though, I do flip into it, I want to keep announcing my Chanel chain giveaway. I'm going to be giving out this chain as soon as we hit 1,000 subscribers. So if you want to be entered, there's the four steps in the description below. Now, this is the watch itself right here. How beautiful um, is this piece? Now, we will get into this type of strap and why it has to be on here. I am not a huge fan of it. Um, these might be a few downsides. We'll go through them first, but let's discuss this brand. This brand is called H. Moser and Sia, uh, meaning co in Russian. This is a Russian made watch. Um, this was made during the World War I era. This was before the communists took over. Because when the communists took over um, and it became the USSR, uh, the, this watch brand was kicked out. Moser was kicked out. He left. Um, the, you know, back then, communism, there was no such thing really as capitalism or entrepreneurship. So he had to leave the country. Then they stopped making these in Russia. But while they were making them in Russia, they made them pretty much a mil spec um, and we'll discuss that because there's a little a uh, notch here and um, I believe it's called a marine um, marine it's not a chronometer of course I don't even think uh, cost was not even in wristwatches yet um, there were Rolexes during this time uh, for the Allies of course I believe they were only made for the Allies um, and this was of course made for Russia who was fighting on the Allied side uh, during World War One and World War Two, actually. Um, but this particular piece is just amazing. Now, I would love to know your opinion. Is this an enamel dial? I'll try to get different, you know, shots in. It's a mineral glass. That I don't even think, uh, um, what do you call it? Hesalite was even invented really yet, or at least mainstream. I know for a fact, uh, the reason why it has to be on the strap is because there is no stainless steel. This is a base metal watch. You might be saying, uh, why the watch nerd? Why do you recommend it as a high quality watch if it is not stainless steel? I thought all, all watches that were high quality or, you know, made to a certain standard would be stainless steel. And I thought that too. But then I started doing research on this watch. Stainless steel was not invented until 1913, I believe, for the British uh, submarines or it was their British cannons. It was something got to do um, with the cannons. I did not time uh, this watch too. It's actually set to 1010. That is actually hilarious. But uh, the story goes back to the British um, and they didn't use it until wristwatches till the 1930s. So you literally had to buy either this or a precious metal watch. Uh, that's why Rolex, of course, used sterling silver. This does not, this chooses for a base metal alloy. It does turn the wrist green. I do not recommend it if you have a base metal allergy. Everybody's slightly different, but I do have a horrible allergy. Um, I tried a different one of these on and it was, it turned my whole wrist green. Um, the crown is beautiful and it is winding. I will actually let you hear it really quickly. beautiful sound um and you also can change the time not by i tried setting the crown um but these old ones these i guess it's a mil spec you can technically call it a mil spec um because it met all the standards back then but you can change the time here if i do put you have to put pressure on a button and there that that's how you would change the time yes it's not the easiest or most convenient but Back then, soldiers, I assume soldiers, uh, needed to set the time and have it stay, like stay, you know, because um, there were, uh, you know, they don't want the chime changing. It was a military tactic, and that's really what started this whole uh, 
trend off here. It does open up. It has been serviced by the last owner. I don't want to open it up. I haven't yet. Um, but I could pop in like images of these type of movements. Uh, they did make movements for Omega uh, Moser. And Moser right now is, you, you will not buy a Moser this cheap um, nowadays. Uh, Moser's, I believe the entry level is 17,000 or 14,000. Um, that is their entry level. Uh, that you, you have to realize that most brands, including the one I'm wearing, uh, you know, are way, way less than that. This is a very exclusive and luxury brand nowadays. Back then, they were actually used for uh, uh, military specs. And it, let's get it up just slightly closer. You can tell that the hands are actually blued. This is not painted blue. These are real blued hands. This is all original as far as I can tell. A beautiful case and it has been I guess a little bit refinished the case because of the service I don't mind that um, I prefer it actually in functional condition I prefer the movement working than you know a very bad poor um, condition and you can hear the tick I mean it is a loud loud tick so I like that um, some people maybe not because it is not stainless steel so it has a louder tick let's throw it on the wrist really quick and I will uh, show you how beautiful it actually is so here it is on the wrist. Um, this one is 37 millimeters. Yes, maybe it's not the most modern day looking watch, but it is beautiful. And I, you know, it really is a conversation starter. If somebody sees this unusual trench to lugs, um, things like, you know, you never see, you can't change, forget about um, sizing the lugs because you cannot change it. You literally have to cut the strap or glue it or buy a strap like this. Those are the only ways you can get um, a fit with this type of thing. Um, and I had to wait a long time. I bought the watch without a strap and then I uh, had to get a strap for it. Uh, so beautiful. I do not regret my purchase. You can still pick these up for under a thousand. Now this is, let's talk about price here. Um, if it is an enamel dial, please, uh, if you are a vintage uh, expert or a Moser expert, comment down below. This is not my number one uh, field right here. I do know a lot about watches. I particularly do know a lot about Rolexes, but Moser, um, I have been doing crazy research, especially because this is my own personal piece, I do have to say. I purchased this myself just because of the history I absolutely love. Um, and that, look how clean this dial is. There's a little um, water damage, as you can see, in certain areas. I mean, over 100 years old, you can't ask for uh, everything, but there's no cracks in this. I, I, it's either porcelain or enamel. The way the light plays with it is just unbelievable. It's just crazy beautiful. And uh, I'm very, very, I do not regret this purchase at all. I did pay a lot though for it uh, compared to other ones, uh, but I paid for the bigger case and a bunch of other things. So in the outro, I just want to say this watch is highly underrated, in my opinion. These type of, uh, you know, feel, I guess it's a field watch. I do not know what that dial is. I have no idea. I think it's enamel. I'm pretty, like, 90% sure it might be something else. I would love to know. The system uh, is just incredible. The accuracy... Honestly, it hasn't been bad. One time it did stop with me a couple times, actually, probably twice, but I have to change the time. Uh, that's pretty simple. I mean, it's not a lot to do. Um, and it has been super accurate with me. I'm very lucky. It has been serviced very recently, though, too. Um, and I'm very happy with my purchase. I would love to know what is your opinions down in the comments below. What do you prefer? Like t types of watches like this um, in the vintage game or modern day ones like mine? Um, perpetual. I would love to know all this uh, in the comments down below. And do you want to see more videos like this? Do you want me to expand my collection, talk about pieces like this? Because I really don't talk about vintage a lot, um, except for vintage Rolex. But uh, there's other brands out there, especially Moser, that really need to be, um, you know, uh, have a line, have a, have a spotlight. Because I looked up videos, very few people have this. And if they are, they're like service videos. They're not talking about how beautiful this actual piece is. So I want to thank you all. If you do want the Chanel chain giveaway, which I have conveniently 
uh, right next to me. As you can see here, um, this is not the best uh, photo surface here, but uh, this is an enamel um, with sterling silver Chanel chain. Comes with the box as soon as we hit 1,000 subscribers. So if you want to be entered, there's the four steps in the description below. Thank you, and I will catch you in the next one.